So real fast before I have to turn this thing off, um, I got it idling. You can check out the fuel table here. Get some live data. So if I want to add and remove fuel, I can kind of clicky clicky with the ma or with the keyboard and move around with the mouse, highlight fields, stuff like that. Um, got it kind of idling okay. It's still in warm up enrichment. It's still not perfect, but it's it's running without my foot on the gas. Oh, until then, I don't know what happened there. We'll check the log. Um, so I am data logging this so I can analyze it later. Um, I have to see what that event was, see what happened there. But I am running, um, I'm in warm up enrichment still. So here's the warm up enrichment curve. I'm almost out of it because I'm really getting hot. I'm just adding a little bit of fuel extra. Um, got just a minute before I have to turn this back off because uh, I don't have fans to cool it down right now. sink loss since I said I was having some problems with it. It actually seems that my, my cabling's fine, my wiring's fine. I think what was happening is I was trying to control this IAC steps and basically the burning of the ECU is what causes this. So every time it was happening I was messing with it. I didn't really realize because I was looking in the log and, and so that should probably fix it if I just leave it alone a little bit and let it run. I think it's good to go. Um, you can actually see this ignition log I took uh, and I was a little confused. This is a normal 428 tooth pattern. It looks pretty good. You know, big pulse, three little pulses, four little pulses, and then it starts over. So that's, that's one complete engine cycle. Um, if I come through this, I can go through time here and then all of a sudden, boom, all this happens. Like I get a cam signal all of a sudden, which I knew wasn't right. These are, I think, sink loss reasons, or sink counter. Um, but then it's back to normal, so that's after the burn. So every time it does a burn, this weird thing happens, I guess. So, um, otherwise it looks fine. Uh, anyway, that's about it for sink loss, but while I've got everything set up, I was gonna uh, show the scatter plots. So I finally uh, went to check the price again on Megalog Viewer Pro and the Pro version of Tuner Studio. Uh, they're both paid programs. They're free to do everything I've done up until now. Uh, you can run the engine, you can tune, you can do everything. But with Tuner Studio, you get the auto tuner and some extra features, Dash Designer and, and various other things uh, that I plan to use. And with Megalog Viewer, you get this cool scatter plots thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, you can basically go any x-axis, any y-axis from your logs. So I've got a, a two-minute log, or sorry, a two-megabyte log opened here. So quite a lot of data, um, data points to go off of. So you can pick any of these logged data fields. So um, you can get some really cool information out of this. Basically, on this x-axis here, I have pulse width. So that's how, how long the injectors are open for of each engine cycle. Uh, air fuel ratio on this. So I go anywhere from 12.3 up to 16.4 in this log. Um, and you can sort of see how the pulse widths relate to that. I've got this z-axis actually colored by time right now, but uh, you can pretty much do anything you want with this. Uh, got, let's see, it looks, it's real nice if you do, uh, this would be uh, matte. See, map on the x-axis, or sorry, actually I want map on the y-axis, um, RPM on the x-axis. So this sort of looks like our table, and I've got it colored by time right now, which isn't terribly helpful, um, but I can color that by AFR. So I can actually see how I was running blue being really rich, red being really lean in this case. Um, or relatively rich, relatively lean actually for this log. It's auto scaling for uh, the data that it sees, I believe. 
but you can see I'm getting pretty rich over maybe you can see these red dots over here uh, rather that's pretty lean up into the higher RPMs. This is only 2000 RPM it's mostly idling kind of playing with the throttle a little bit but you come up uh, in map actually I got up to 92 kPa uh, at, at some point doing a, a, a little rev or playing with the throttle so you can see at that point exactly uh, what your AFR was which is really cool uh, you can sort of see if you have big sections in your table that aren't going to be tuned right or look a little bit funny. Um, I haven't really actually gotten into setting most of this stuff, so I haven't really been able to analyze these tables for any use yet, but uh, they're just incredibly helpful. You can you can change all sorts of different stuff. Uh, so that's uh, Spark Dwell right there versus Map. Um, I mean, there's Ignition Load. If you want that boost duty cycle if you've got closed loop boost and you want to see uh, boost duty versus boost pressure for instance uh, just really cool stuff so you get that and actually they're having a sale right now uh, or at least a few days ago uh, that it was uh, 80 bucks for the pair so that's pretty good I think it's usually 110 for the pair which still is pretty good considering what all you get and basically you're supporting um, the people who gave you that free software anyway, which is also pretty cool. So, um, anyway, that was that. Uh, that covered the kind of the log viewer, which I've looked at before, the ignition log viewer, and the scatter plots, which are just really fun to play around with. Um, I mean, battery voltage here, you can see if you have any weirdness going on. Anyway, really cool stuff. I think you can do like 16 of these guys at once. You can play the data through. Well, my computer can't do 16 at once. Oh, there we go. So, these are all just set up pretty much the same, some of them backwards, but you can select only certain data you want. Actually, let me go back to one. It's old in that book. It's not really up to the task here. Uh, so, you can select certain ranges, and it's going to, if it'll catch up, it'll trim the data set to just what you want to see at a certain time base. So, uh, really cool stuff. Anyway, that's about it on this. My sync loss is all solved and uh, should be good to go once I get the rest of the stock ECU worked out.